If you're interested in boondock style camping, you want more privacy, serenity, interaction with the nature around you, and you want to hear some tips on how to boondock longer, quieter, and more cost effectively, stick around. We're going to share with you some of the things that we've been doing to boondock for up to six months a year. Hi, my name's Aaron Miller and this is Plan Free, the channel that illustrates a location independent lifestyle and shows you how to get it. We're just wrapping up about a six week boondock right now. And we're gonna share with you some of the tips that helped us stay out in places like this the entire time. Usually we'd be boondocking for up to six months in a summer. We're shortening this particular summer boondock trip because we've accepted a two month house sit in one of Canada's most beautiful cities. So stick around, I'm sure there'll be some videos coming out on that. But in this video, we're gonna share with you how we boondock longer, more cost effectively and quieter. We're by no means experts, and I'm sure some of you out there will have tips and tricks that are even better than what we're doing, and that's great. Please share them in the comments. But as we learn each year, we're getting better and better at staying out longer and longer in serene places like this as we continue to enjoy boondocking. And we're gonna share with you some of the best tips that we're doing and learning as we go in hopes that you can utilize them too. Probably one of the main obstacles for people that want to make a transition into the boondocking style camping is power. And that's what I hear most often from people. Well, we need to be plugged in, otherwise we just can't camp. So let's begin to talk about power because it is important and how do we create that power when we're out here in the middle of nowhere? Now the easiest, most convenient way to generate power when you're out boondocking is to use a generator, obviously. In our case, we carry two of them. We have one that's on board built into our motorhome and then we carry another portable one uh, behind the motorhome that's smaller and quieter. You might be able to see the portable one in this shot, I'm not sure. Now we will use these generators when necessary, but we've sort of moved beyond this because while it's easy and convenient to generate power this way, we find the noise of these machines don't really mix with our idea of serenity in interacting with nature. Also, we didn't want to be overly reliant on perpetually having a large fuel supply to refill these generators because oftentimes we're boondocking a fair distance from any sort of uh, civilization that could refill services like this. And so we began to explore ways to boondock while minimizing our generator use. So we're in a scenario now where we endeavor to run our generators as little as possible. I think right now in an average month, we'll run the generators around two hours in a month or so. In simple terms, we just began irritating ourselves with the sound of our power blocks. And also we can imagine that when we have neighbors that can hear them, we would also be irritating to them. And we didn't want to be that noisy neighbor for let's say someone that's coming out for three or four days and wants to enjoy the sounds of nature around them. The alternative method that we explored to bring in power and energy to our unit was the use of solar panels and in conjunction inverters and batteries. We found immediately once we added two 100 watt solar panels that our reliance on our generators dropped drastically. So before solar panels, we would have to run our generators four or five hours a day every second day. Now with the solar panels, the required amount that we use our generators, like I mentioned before, is about two hours a month. Immediately after adding solar panels, we notice significant benefits in the form of drastically reduced noise pollution because we no longer have to run the power blocks or generators almost ever. And we still have very good flexibility from the energy that the solar panels create. So we can still keep our battery systems charged to run all of our small onboard appliances like our fridge, what have you, lights, etc. But we can also do things like charge these laptops or this phone, microphone, whatever, use small appliances off of our inverter. So it gives, gives us quite a range of flexibility for our power requirements and it doesn't require us to run our generators anymore. So for us that was a huge advantage so that we can actually hear the nature when we're out camping. 
The solar panel setup is still quite new to us. We're in our second season of doing it. And so you can see that our mounting system is temporary and uh, kind of basic. We're also considering transitioning to a more foldable style, uh, lightweight solar panel setup. And so we'll be looking at doing that going forward as well. We're also going to be looking to upgrade our onboard batteries from the lead acid style to a better technology. Right now we're leaning towards lithium batteries. If any of you have opinions or experiences or ideas in the area of onboard battery storage systems, please add to the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Once you've made some simple changes as far as portable power goes, you'll be well on your way to boondocking longer. And the next thing you'd want to turn your attention to is your probably your next biggest basic need, and that is drinkable water. In the area of water, the basic idea is the more you bring or the more you have, the longer you can stay. And so for us at this point in time, we use multiple large containers to hold drinking water and bring with us. I think our current setup allows us to bring out around 40 gallons or so of drinking water. This system has allowed us to stay out boondocking in these locations for longer periods. I think this amount of water will last us for normal usage and drinking for around six weeks. We will be exploring other methods to further extend our ability to stay out in boondocking type locations and not have water be our weak link. So I know some people out there will install inline filter systems and be able to drink the water from their holding tanks, or they'll use things like treatment tablets or portable filter systems. And all of those ideas are interesting to us right now. If any of you are using some of those uh, systems or others, and you're having good experience with it, as far as extending your ability to boondock, please add them in the comments below and let us know what you're doing successfully to increase your, your available drinking water. Still on the subject of water, another set of tips relates to how much water you're now putting into your holding tanks because another limiting factor for many of us uh, determining how long we can boondock uh, for amount of time would be holding tank management. And what that usually means for us is identifying tasks, big or small, that we can still undertake and not have that liquid go into the holding tank. So we're going to share some tips that might help you in this area. The first area would be that of hygiene. So what we've begun doing is setting up things like a hand washing station with a dish of water and a pail beside it for refilling so that every time we wash our hands, we're not putting liquid into the holding tanks. In addition, we'll use a feature on our motorhome, hopefully you have one as well, which is an outdoor shower. And so if your propane reserves are flush or you have lots, you can heat up your water and run warm or hot water out to your outdoor shower and enjoy yourself a natural shower. There's very few things that are more refreshing than having an outdoor shower in nature while you're boondocking. Recently, we've added an outdoor shelter for increased privacy and we can use that for our outdoor showers or we can use it in another form of bathing that we sometimes utilize. If let's say we're short on water or propane, we will use a pot of water that's often heated on the fire. And we'll take that in with uh, uh, soap and a rag and we'll do sponge baths that way. Utilizing this shelter, you can gain privacy pretty much wherever you like. If you have a naturally occurring water source nearby, you can utilize this for bathing as well. The last tip we have on this subject is we oftentimes, before we're leaving the city, we go to one of the dollar stores in the area and we grab several packages of baby wipes. So if you're in a situation where you want to freshen up, uh, this offers a waterless alternative to go ahead and do that. All right, washing dishes would be another uh, sort of water intensive activity that many of us are undertaking while we're boondocking. A uh, workaround that we've started to utilize in this area is we keep a separate bin in our sink around the same size as the sink. And what we'll do is we'll fill that with hot dish water, wash the dishes in it, and then when we're done, we'll take that dish water outside and pour it out. That way, none of the dish water is going towards filling up our holding tanks. Thus, we're again extending how long we can stay out boondocking in any given location.
on the days that we're using propane to heat our hot water tank, we usually like to lump our activities together in one day. So for example, if it's shower day, we'll also make it dishes day so that we can utilize more of the hot water that we've uh, used the propane to heat. In our particular unit, our hot water tank is six gallon. So that will give us enough for both of us to shower and wash the dishes all in one heat rather than using propane multiple times to do the same amount of tasks. The next area that you're going to want to pay attention to when you're looking to boondock longer is your food. Now, oftentimes in an RV or a motorhome, your onboard fridge and freezer are rather small. So needless to say, you want to fill those two things up about as full as you can get them before you leave town. We've found the food areas that you can really stock up on to gain more flexibility in your stay durations are the dry goods and the shelf stable foods. Again, in an RV or motorhome, oftentimes space is a limiting factor. So we would encourage you to get creative as far as temporarily converting spaces that aren't traditionally used for food storage into that for a while. Yes, you'll at the beginning of your trip, you'll feel overrun with food stocks and inventory, but as you're consuming, I'm guessing you probably want to eat like every day, you'll be creating more and more space as you go. But we find it's a good trade off to give up some space temporarily for the ability to stay out in these spots for longer. So what we'll do in addition to the cupboards and the usual space that's used for food storage, we'll convert temporarily things like under our bed storage or even some of the outside bins and we'll put food in there for a time. Other spots might include our shower, which as mentioned before, we're usually showering outside. So you've got this big space in your motorhome that for us is basically unused. And we'll sometimes convert that to either empty water jug storage or food storage. We make it a fun ongoing exercise to identify items that are in our motorhome that we're no longer using and eliminate them from packing around so that because every item that we remove from the motorhome that creates more space for things like food that we can pack in. Some of the food choices that can last a long time are either dry or shelf stable would be things like nuts, seeds, grains, cereals, flowers, dried fruits, uh, hiking or military type ration foods. Sometimes they're like boil in a bag or sealed type meals. If any of you uh, are having good experience with uh, hiking or military style ration type portable foods, please add your experiences to the comments below and recommendations as we are looking to add more of those things into our uh, pack along kitty. In addition, things like concentrated greens powder, uh, collagen powder, bone broth powder, protein powders, these will all be good food sources that are lightweight, shelf stable and packable. Canned goods like vegetables, meats, beans, uh, things like coffee, alcohol if you're into that sort of thing. All of these will be excellent items to stock up on before you leave for your boondocking experience. The next thing you want to pay attention to is in the area of comfort and that is heat. Many of the onboard uh, furnaces or heating systems in RVs and motorhomes are terribly inefficient and they will require a ton of propane or whatever your power source is to run them. In addition to requiring uh, a fair amount of battery power to turn them on and off, run the thermostat, etc. One of the first things that we did when we began to boondock more was move away from the onboard furnace, which we basically never use today. And for us, we went with an alternative heating source, which was much smaller in the form of a Mr. Heater. The one that we use is a two setting high and low, 6,000 BTU on low and 12,000 BTU on high. This is more than enough to heat our 32 foot motorhome. Most of the time I run it on high for a few minutes and then run it on low for a little while and then eventually shut it off. This is in the summer. Now in the shoulder season, you'll find yourself running it more and more, longer durations on high, and then sometimes basically throughout the day. But it's still drastically more efficient to run something like a Mr. Heater than it would be to run your onboard furnace system while boondocking. Any of you out there that are utilizing creative and cost-efficient heating systems in your RVs while boondocking, 
please share with us what you're doing, add to the comments below so that others may be able to take advantage of some of those ideas. Now when it's particularly cold outside and we're running the mystery heater for long durations, we sometimes use a small USB powered fan to assist in the circulation of the heat and the air. One note is when you're using a heating system like a Mr. Heater, it will consume oxygen. So be sure to vent your windows to have enough fresh air coming into your unit so that you can remain in a safe oxygen level. We carry an extra portable propane tank to run our Mr. Heater because I may have mentioned that the onboard propane tank that we have in this particular motorhome is not very large. And so we use the external portable tank to run the Mr. Heater. In the event that that runs out, it's much more convenient for us just to take the portable cylinder into wherever it may be, sometimes over an hour to get it refilled, than having to pick up our entire camp and move the motorhome just to fill the tank that's on board. So anything we can do to lengthen the amount of time that we would have to fill the onboard system will then lengthen the, our ability to boondock, which is what we're after here. Now, previously when we owned our fifth wheel, it had two removable 40 pound propane tanks on it. And so propane inventory wasn't as much of a concern. So depending on what configuration of unit you own out there, propane and things like it will be more or less of a concern. So customized to your individual unit that you currently run with. Hot water bottles are something that are very cost effective and easy to use that we've used over the years, especially in shoulder seasons, generate extra heat for basically no cost. We'll generally heat a pot of water on the fire, pour it into the hot water bottle, and then we'll use those hot water bottles either on our lower back behind us while sitting around a campfire on cool evenings, or we'll throw one or two in our bed and it instantly warms up your feet and makes it a much more pleasant experience going to bed in the shoulder seasons. And it keeps you warm for quite some time. Speaking of heating water on the fire for the hot water bottles, we'll often utilize the same campfire energy source to heat things like dish water or water for sponge baths. And on that note, just a good old campfire is often an excellent source of energy and heat to make your experience more comfortable on shoulder seasons or when it's cool out. On the subject of campfires, we generally increase the frequency and duration that we enjoy these again on shoulder seasons. So in the summer, we basically use fires for cooking or heating water. But once it starts to become spring or fall and it's cooler out, oftentimes we'll utilize a fire to sit in front of to stay warm. And so this leads to another recommendation or encouragement. If you're looking to boondock longer, you'd want to add a collection of tools that you're able to collect and process firewood with. This can significantly extend the amount of time that you can boondock and increase the amount of comfort you've got while you're doing it. So consider adding to your collection things like saws, axes, hatchets, and for us even a tarp is very helpful so that you can cover your wood and protect it from things like rain. Keeping it dry for the next time you want to light a fire to create some heat. The next subject we're going to talk about is light. Now in the summer when in our neck of the woods anyway the daylight hours are long the light usually lasts 16 hours plus and so creating your own light isn't much of a concern. But again on shoulder seasons in the spring and fall the necessity or the frequency that you'll want to create light will increase. One of the things that we did was we switched all of the light bulbs over in our motorhome from the stock light bulbs that come with it to LED style light bulbs, which in theory will require less power to generate light. So now you're drawing less on your onboard system. The second thing we utilize in shoulder seasons more and more is the use of candles and hurricane lamps, which will require no electricity to create that light. All right, we wanna add a little bonus section here, which is going to be based around what happens if you redline some of your systems, but you want to continue to boondock? So for example, what happens if you run out of water, whether it be drinking water or system water? What happens if you run out of propane? How can you extend the amount of time you can boondock in those situations? Now we're currently in a real world situation where several of these things have happened to us. 
So we're in a scenario now where we're so low on propane in our onboard system to where we've deemed as of a couple of weeks ago that we'll have just enough propane to run our fridge and nothing else. So now we're in a scenario, well, what do you do as far as cooking your food and heating water and stuff like that? So we've made pretty much a full-time unanimous transition from cooking in our motorhome to now where we're cooking on the fire. So this is a skill that you'd want to develop and improve over time. If you're interested to extend the amount of time, you can boondock. The second area that we want to talk about that we've redlined, and you might too, is the amount of drinking water that you have. So in our case here, we uh, did some research and we sought out some natural springs. So if you have the ability to also access this water source, this can extend the amount of time you can boondock. So what we did was we collected water from this natural spring that's not too far off, and then we boil it for five minutes on the fire. And we utilize that water for making things like coffee and in a pinch, we'll use it to drink as well. As mentioned before, other methods to turn uh, natural water into drinking water may be things like portable filters or treatment tablets. So utilize whatever you've got. And also if there's anybody out there that has some good tips as far as turning natural water into drinking water quickly, go ahead and add those ideas to the comments below so that we can hear about what you're doing. Now, obviously, in a scenario where we're short on water, we're going to transition from using our outdoor shower. We're going to stop doing that pretty much completely. And now we're going to universally start using things like available water sources to bathe or heating some of that water on the fire and then utilizing our shelter to have a sponge bath. So we're able to keep the basics handled while we boondock longer and longer. Now, again, I mentioned that we're not experts at this. We're improving all the time. And I'm sure some of you out there have better systems than what we've described. If you do, go ahead and add some of the things that you're doing successfully to boondock longer in the comments and start the conversation. If you like what we're talking about in this video and on this channel, press the like button and subscribe. My name's Air. This is Plan Free. We'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now.